Hi, everybody, and thanks for joining our weekly podcast. I'm Robin Lewis, founder and CEO of The Robin Report, which, by the way, is much more than a daily report. Um, it's really a knowledge platform, okay, and, and if, if from which we communicate thought leadership on various strategic topics, um, yes, through our daily reports, but also these podcasts. And we've got webinars that we're doing in the near future, and eventually maybe we'll have some uh, live events. And along with our chief strategist, Shelley Cohan, also, by the way, professor at FIT and Syracuse University, we welcome you to our conversation on the topic of unrequited rage, the customer service plummet. Oh boy. Well, Shelley, um, uh, unre unrequited rage, rage, this is me screaming, right? Raging actually into my phone as my call to retailer X for return instructions for something I did not order had gone through a computerized voice three times to direct my call, then puts me on hold <laughs> because their call volume is uh, extremely high. I'm told uh, wait time could be 30 minutes. Then comes, of course, the elevator music. And now I'm late to a meeting. And that is it, right? I snap and go into a rage, even though I know it's unrequited, you know, like the unrequited love your puppy gives you, but this is totally opposite, right? So I'm yelling into an empty hole. Yeah. So that retailer should be giving me unrequited love, AKA superior service uh, throughout my shopping journey. And particularly when, when I have a problem like the one I just mentioned. Well, Shelly, according to a um, 2023 national customer rage survey of all things, uh, of 1,000 U.S. adults, as reported by Retail Wire, 43% of Americans <clears throat> expressed their anger over their serious product and service problems. And that is up from 35% in 2015. And get this, 9% actually took action to get back at the companies that caused their rage. Wow. You know, either by pest pestering or public shaming, either in person or online. And that's up from just 3% in 2020. 74% had a product or service problem in the past year, double the amount in 1976. The survey said customer uncivility is on the rise. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah, Shelly, as we get into this, it, 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 it's really the fault of the retail retailer or whatever the service provider is um, because of their lack of loving the customer up with superior service. Why wouldn't customers get more uncivil like me once I did get to a human being to discuss what to do with the wrong product sent to me? I just continued my raging and to add insult to injury, <laughs> they just hung up on me. <laughs> I, oh my God, that's you terrible. know, yeah, I had to do, uh, I had to, to down three rollades on that one. I mean, you know, and the survey says things are getting worse. And more frustrating is the fact that service reps are being replaced by uh, FAQs, frequently, frequently asked questions. And chat bots, of course. Also, try figuring out how to contact the company. And when you do, you'll listen to long messages and many filters before you get a rep. Half of those surveys uh, surveyed searched for a phone number, and 41% said none were available. Anyway, social media is replacing the phone as the primary complaint channel at 5%, up from 5% uh, in 2013. 
And I think I got that number wrong. Anyway, the, the, the primary complaint channel is social media at this point in time. On a humorous note, Shelley, the, the CEO of the company that did the survey said, there's a democratization of complaining. Get that. So, Shelly, uh, I don't know. What's your take? Like me, um, have you found it increasingly frustrating to reach a human being for the solution of a problem? And generally, is it getting worse? And what about service and engagement in the store? And, Shelly, even, even if a big investment has to be made to fix it, isn't that better than potentially losing a bunch of loyal customers? Wow, Robin. I mean, you and I, we've talked about this issue of technology in terms of customer service, and it's just not a panacea for all and every service issue. You know, retailers are deploying AI to help with service issues, and there's some areas where this makes sense, but what I really see happening is something else. It's a kind of lack of human touch in the service model across many mm. retailers. And I'm not talking about retailers employing this high level person service, they'd go broke, of course, but companies can't just leave it up to AI and it's many limitations to solve every service issue. A factor that's certainly impacting this lack of humanization in retail is the shortage of workers and these high turnover rates. And by the way, here's associates that even are working in the customer service areas, they've kind of adopted this, I'm only gonna take so much from a customer attitude, a la the, cusp, the person hanging up on you. You know, Howard Beale, I'm as mad as now. Oh, I'm not right. going to take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Shelly. I, I just had a flashback uh, to <laughs> Beale ranting about the forces uh, that makes everyone li everybody's lives miserable. He, uh, the char character, stood up in his khaki raincoat with his wet hair plastered to his head and said, just that. I am mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. Are we going back 50 years? I mean, there, there was this super civil atmosphere that we had coming out of the pandemic. People being super nice to strangers. Re yeah, and retail and uh, restaurant workers. We all just lived through one of our most I I difficult times. Well, that is done and gone. And now we are seeing the polar opposite uncivility on the rise, right? Absolutely. I think that this whole lack of human touch and this accelerated rollout of technology in the retail environment has really led this shift of service recovery from the responsibility of the retailer over to the consumer. And so you're right, Rob, and it's super frustrating. Companies are putting the onus of service solutions back on the customer. Right, <clears throat> right. The customer's got to log into an app or website. They got to find their order number. They have to wait for an agent if anyone ever shows up. And oftentimes they have to pay for remedy in many cases. So since when is the customer responsible for sol solving their own service issues? So, I mean, I feel like AI and machine learning can be great to solve simple, redundant business <clears throat> issues like where's my order, yeah. update on delivery status, those types of things. But <clears throat> more complex issues still require some type of human intervention. Yeah, you're so right. And the other, other issue, Shelley, is that often when, when you do finally get a human voice, <laughs> uh, really get someone, um, they have a lack of knowledge or even desire to fully resolve the issue. And, and there's a huge lack of empathy. I think it comes, comes from the current state of the workforce. Um, you know, they, they will only take so much from a customer complaint and they're not proactively solving the issue. Um, and there seems to be limitations of policy and process prohibit employees from going above and beyond. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy. And, you know, Rob, and I could probably sit here, sadly, for the next 12 hours and tell you story after story after story, yeah. own ridiculous service experiences. But let me just give you one illustrative example from one of my previously favorite retailers. 
<laughs> previously, right. Uh -huh. So I bought the same size from this retailer of several garments. Some items fit and some items didn't fit. So I wanted to return the ones that didn't fit, but the website would only issue a paid return. So like many of us who are loyal to a brand, you know, we don't want to pay for returns. So I try to spend the next three days trying to get to a real person. I leave Three days. Messages. Unbelievable. I yeah. leave voice messages. No one ever calls me back. So you, you said you missed a meeting while you were on hold waiting for an agent. Robin, I missed so much time from work and life trying to just, you know, get to someone to resolve the issue. Yeah. It's crazy. So fast forward three days, I finally get a service rep on the phone. I tell her I bought the same size in several garments, but only one fit. You know what her answer is? Each, each size is different. It depends on the garment and how it's made. Oh, my God. <laughs> the garment is made differently there's no common size and they won't let me return it because of fit i was outraged i thought about writing a letter to the ceo and i asked the service agent if it made sense to her that every garment fits completely different she actually said yes it did make sense because every item's different it's just <laughs> crazy so i know Here's the good news, Robin. I did not turn to public shaming. I actually did something worse than that. I silently went away. There you go. In one second, I was I went from best customer to a zero spend customer. I stopped shopping with them. And honestly, I haven't bought anything from that retailer in over a year. And I don't plan to. Boy, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, and public shaming is certainly bad but just walking away may be totally worse right that silent customer that just plain quits like you just mentioned you know an online service is, is frustrating also especially when using those automated bots you, you know hi i am julie how can i help and then you have to repeat information over and over again even making a, you know, a simple reservation has <clears throat> become so complicated. There's too much reliance on the phone or mobile devices, right? Right, Robin. I mean, when I'm out <laughs> shopping in a store or looking for a dinner place, I really don't want to have to make a reservation on my iPhone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, I've literally been standing in front of a host at a restaurant to make a dinner reservation. And they tell me I have to do it on the app. <laughs> What if I don't have the app? Right. What if I don't have my phone with me? What if I'm 80 and I don't even know what an app is? <laughs> Watch <laughs> out on that age thing. <laughs> is there any logical reason why the person that's standing right in front of me can't just make this reservation? I, yeah. I honestly think in some cases we're becoming too reliant on technology. There should be mm -hmm. a balance between the two. Um, and by the way, this is, is this isn't just an issue in hospitality or retail. I mean, even the medical field is moving the patient oh. to be responsible for tests and labs. Yeah. Now, I, now I have to be a doctor too. I have to log into the <laughs> portal and try to decipher my own medical charts. Oh, I know. This, yeah. this this customer service plummet is across many industries. Seriously, Robin, I spend more of my time logging into portals, websites, and apps. And all this takes away from my personal time. And when we have a problem and we can't get to a real person, no wonder everyone's on edge. We just yeah. get customers, patients, workers, some <clears throat> work to do. We're shifting the responsibility over to the user and away from the company. Well, kind of contemporarily what's going on today, just pull your gun out and shoot them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. And ironically, Shelly, uh, uh, being able to, to complain has become much easier. Um, we no longer need to write emails or letters, right? We can simply post on Instagram or do a TikTok video about our service. In some cases, we, we can videotape a customer service incident and post it to our social media, either by pestering or public shaming, either in person or online, this public shaming can actually become quite uncivil, right? Even posting unfavorable reviews seems more civil to me. 
uh, just providing an opinion about the company, more factual uh, than subjective as opposed to posting some derogatory message on social media. Yeah, and to be honest, Robin, you know, much of this uncivility is coming from leaders of our own country. Yeah. Politics of this country has given cause and outrage to both parties, and they feel compelled to take it to the streets. A divided country we've become, and this transcends into other areas of our lives, retail, academia, community. The whole country feels on edge, and when these small <clears throat> service disruptions occur, we want to use a megaphone and tell everyone about the outrage. Yeah, Shelley, you know, politics is certainly one area that, that may have consumers on edge, but think about uh, the rise in inflation and, right. and interest rates. And, you know, they're, they are being pinched and feeling more stressed uh, to make ends meet. I mean, if, if the perceived value is not there for a product uh, and service, they want to be accommodated and, and they do not want more stress on them to put forth the effort to get the problem resolved. You know, at what point did service recovery land on the shoulders? Well, of the customers you just mentioned. Yeah. Well, I think retailers need to make sure that service recovery process is helped, not hindered by technology. You know, staying on top of customer reviews and social media <clears throat> post postings is good, but even more simple practices like answering emails, providing an avenue where customers can voice dissatisfaction and be heard. Yeah. And the other thing, Robin, is training. So many companies have been cutting back on training. And when you have right. less workers, you actually should be investing in training because you have the fewer workers. Let, let the employees be a hero. Give them empowerment. Have a smooth process that works to solve both repetitive service inquiries and issues and also more complex ones. Yeah, those are great points, Shelley. And as I said earlier, retailers should view spending on training their people, you know, to treat consumers uh, looking for help or airing complaints, uh, to treat them with empathy and making the process quicker. I mean, the cost of that should be viewed as an investment. You know, the ROI or return on investment of which would then be keeping customers happy and particularly keeping loyal customers like you or in that example you gave. Um, you know, you just walked out their door never to return. I mean, this whole issue driven by expectations of technology doing all the work. It really is beginning to show uh, the negative part of technology. You cannot replace the human touch with a bot, right? That's right, Robin. You, you got that right. So uh, for our listeners, you can find more of our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Buzzsprout, and theRobinReport.com. Look for us on YouTube where we broadcast our podcast as well. And make sure you follow us on social media, link in with us for the latest thoughts about the industry. And I thank you all once again for joining us. And as I say every week, if you have a topic that you would like Shelly and I to, to, to cover, please send me an email. It's robin at therobinreport.com. Thanks again.